the British Euro MEP, Nigel Farage. He's a renowned Eurosceptic. Uh, let's hear what he has to say about banks benefiting from the system of bailouts at the moment and, of course, the situation there in Greece. Mr Farage, thanks very much indeed for joining us live there in Brussels. I've got a report here from the Financial Times in front of me saying that bank chiefs' average pay in the US and Europe let 36% last year to $9.7 million. And one banker is reportedly to have earned something like $21 million last year. What do you make of the bankers cashing in on the economic crisis at the moment? Well, I'm all for people making money. I mean, making money is good, uh, but not if it's at the expense of everybody else. And part of what we're seeing this afternoon is we're seeing country like Greece um, becoming engulfed in a financial and democratic tragedy. Um, and one of the reasons that everybody is so determined to keep Greece in the euro is so that the banks don't have to take a serious hit on their faulty lending policies. So, no, something has gone seriously wrong with the banking system. And it's almost as if there's a sort of unholy alliance of politicians and bankers versus ordinary people. And I'm sure that's what the people on the streets of Athens today feel like. But the regulators are clearly failing, aren't they? Why should these bankers be allowed to get away with this? I mean, surely a lot of well, that anger we're seeing in Greece is directed to those sort of people we're talking about right now. Well, look, from Alan Greenspan uh, through the United Kingdom and most of Western Europe, in the late 1990s, we tore up much of the banking regulation that we'd had for the previous 70 years, and traditional lending ratios went out of the window. When the whole thing went belly up in 2008, the response from the European Union and from other governments was we had to do whatever was necessary to prop up these banks and to keep them in business. Um, and we're now beginning, I think, to pay the price for that. Don't think the banking crisis is over. I suspect that it's hardly begun. And in many cases, it might have been better to do what Iceland did and to say, look, these banks go bust, these people lose their jobs, these people lose their money. That's unfortunate, but that's life. And I suspect we're going to regret keeping the banks afloat and imprisoning countries like Greece inside a currency union to which they're just not suited. You are an MEP. You're there in Brussels. Many people will be saying to you, look, it's your responsibility. You've got to protect the people's rights here. Why aren't you reading the Riot Act to these bankers? Well, I'm afraid that this is not just the bankers, you know, because it's the politicians in the first place that change the rules for the bankers, and it's the politicians that are propping up the bankers. And I have been trying with President Van Rompuy, with President Barroso, with all the people that lead the EU, I have been trying now for four years in question after question and speech after speech, I've been saying to them, what is plan B? Isn't it time we admitted that Greece, Portugal, Ireland are not suited to the Eurozone? Isn't it better that, we, that, that they come out, they get their own currencies back, they have a devaluation, and then of course, some of the banks have to take a hit. But they won't hear of it here, because as far as they're concerned in Brussels, the, the Euro, the Economic and Monetary Union, is a political project. They see it as a stepping stone to the United States of Europe, and they're not prepared to admit they've got it horribly wrong. And for that, frankly, they couldn't care less if tens of millions of people across Europe lose their jobs. That doesn't matter to the European Commission, provided they can maintain the euro and keep propping up the banks. But if they and that's where on, we are. It, sorry to interrupt. If they carry on living in what yeah. you're probably describing as a fantasy land, surely reality will eventually yeah. hit. And will we possibly see a collapse of the eurozone, the euro itself? And presumably that's what you yourself want to see, isn't it? Uh, well, look, um, I don't think the euro is a good idea, but I also do not want to see violence on the streets and people getting hurt, and I don't want to see the euro break up in a disorderly manner. But frankly, if they go on saying there is no plan B, if they go on trying to keep these countries trapped inside the euro, then I'm afraid we are headed for a very sticky end indeed. And, in the, and I, think, I think financially, what will bring this down in the end isn't just the Greek economy or the Portuguese or the Irish. In the end, what's going to bring this down is the European Central Bank itself, an organisation that all the member states have put money into. And the point at which Greece defaults, and it's coming, it could come within the next couple of weeks in my opinion, 
the point at which Greece defaults, you will see the European Central Bank itself effectively will be bust because they've used all this money buying up effectively their own bad debt. And then when the hat goes round, I just can't see countries like Finland, countries like the Netherlands putting money in. So we could be fairly close to the whole thing busting. But uh, so, I, what, so therefore, I, what, I, I, if, if it does collapse in the way you're saying, what happens? Yeah. I mean, you're talking earlier and we've heard obviously that Greece have talked about dropping the euro and, and going back to its own uh, original currency. But just how easy is that transition when we've got con countries already in debt? I mean, is that really the answer to revert back to those old currencies again? Well, the Greek Prime Minister, who's just resigned, Mr Papandreou, said there is no alternative to the austerity package and staying in the euro. This sort of sadomonetarism uh, that he's trying to impose upon the Greek people without the benefits of devaluation. There is always an alternative. And whilst I accept that a Greek default and a return to the drachma would mean a very big, substantial devaluation for Greece, and it would mean many of these banks taking serious hits, and it would question the viability of the European Central Bank itself. It is better sometimes in life to face up to the fact that you've done something that is wrong, that is fundamentally uh, out of kilter, that the Greek and German economies can never be together in an economic and monetary union, and I do not think that we should put another 110 billion euros into bailing out Greece a year after we did it the last time round. All we're doing is pouring good money after bad. It's time to face up to reality and take the hit. Why are you concerned? You're a British MEP there. Britain isn't in the Eurozone. It's not really your problem, is it? What well, it is because uh, we help we, we help with all the bailouts. So British taxpayers um, are, are are involved with the Portuguese bailout, with the Irish bailout, and with the Greek bailout through our membership of the International Monetary Fund. So whatever happens, this does affect British people. Uh, and as an MEP, you know I'm linking arms with politicians from other par other other parties and countries who are saying the same thing. Let's get rid of this euro nonsense. It was bound to fail. It is now causing civil disorder on the streets of Greece, the level of which, frankly, is very worrying and very frightening, and it's time things change. Are you concerned about the same sort of civil disorder perhaps occurring in Britain? Well, I think this. I think if you rob people of their democratic rights, if you take away from them their ability to determine their future by, by who they vote for and who becomes their prime minister, and frankly that's happened in Greece. It doesn't matter whether Papandreou or somebody else is the PM, all the while they're trapped in the euro and taking orders from the European Commission as to what they must tax and what they must spend. I think if you take that, that, that away from people, then the only alternative they're left with is civil disobedience, is civil disorder. It is deeply, deeply worrying. We need a good dose of democracy, both in Greece, in Britain and everywhere else. And if we do that, we'll prevent these things from happening. And just briefly, do you think from what we're seeing there in Europe, your stance, UKIP, the, the party obviously that wants to get Britain out of Europe, uh, do you think you're scoring more political support now and points, uh, bearing in mind with what we're seeing at the moment? How, how do you feel about your party and your position at the moment there? Well, can, can I draw a parallel? And that is the True Finns party, led by Timo Soni, who's a, been, been a colleague of ours here in the European Parliament. They, in the recent Finnish general election, went from 4% at the previous election to 19% in the recent election. They were only one and a half points away from winning the Finnish general election on a ticket of no bailouts. Let's get out of the euro. Let's get our democracy back. Let's take back control of our lives. And I think for UKIP, for the True Finns, for the Freedom Party, party in, in, in Holland, for many, many of these political parties, you are about to see substantial change. Nigel Farage, good to talk to you. Good to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much indeed for joining us live there from Brussels.